Hello class. I hope everyone's doing good today. So let's dive right into this. Unit one, lesson 10, different options for solving one equation. So here are the learning targets. For an equation like three times the quantity x plus two equals 15, I can solve it in two different ways. First, by dividing each side by three, or by first rewriting three times x plus two using the distributive property. And for equations with more than one way to solve, you can choose the easiest way depending on the numbers in the equation. So um, really all we're doing today is we're trying to solve these equations in the easiest way possible. There are multiple ways, but what's the fastest? And just for uh, to spice things up, here we have the meme of the day. When you're doing, um, <laughs> sorry. When you're doing math and there's two minus signs next to each other. We were bad, but now we're good because two minus signs make a positive. Don't forget that. Guys, when you're subtracting these, think of this meme. Okay, so let's dive into the bell work. Uh, lesson 10, uh, point one. Algebra talk, solve each equation. Uh, yeah, so these should be relative, you should solve these relatively quickly. So pause right now and take as much time as you need to solve them. And let's work on these. And welcome back. So looking at the first one, again, if you remember, if we have a group of 100, x plus x minus 3, well, then we divide both sides by 100. So divide by 100, divide by 100. This becomes x minus 3 equals the zeros cancel out 10. And then we add 3 to both sides. x equals 13. The next one, hmm, well, what do you notice? Uh, this is just 500, well, 5 times more. And so is this, is just 5 times more. So if anything, we can divide by 100, I'm sorry, divide by 500. If anything, we can divide by five and we'll get the previous problem. So if you notice, this is a lot like the problems we'll be working on this week. So we know that X is equal to 13 as well. And you can, if you solved it, you would notice that anyways. Well now, how are the others, this one related to the other one? Well, if you know that this is the same number, x minus three, and whatever this is, this is 10 times less than this one. Here's a hundredth, here is a tenth. So if anything, we could just multiply this by a um, hundred, and you would see that this is really three times x minus three equals 30 and it follows the same pattern so you can either solve it or you'll but if you know from the previous examples x is 13 and what about the last one again we could solve it we can divide but if you know that this is um 10 times less or the other one's 10 times more we know that this is just x plus 2 which is equal to 10. But it's not 13 because don't forget that inside the parentheses, it's not x minus three, but x plus two. So that is, we subtract two from both sides, x is equal to eight. Easy peasy, chicken squeezy. Okay, so note time. All right. So here we have uh, lesson 10. And you can write the title on there. So two ways to solve grouped equations. Um, I say they're grouped because they have a parentheses. First way is we can divide the group. We can divide by the group amount. 
So here we have the group of x plus 27. Um, well, we can divide by how much is the group amount? Four fifths. So we divide by four fifths. Well, what happens when we divide four fifths divided by four fifths? Again, we keep change flip, and that's four fifths times five fourths, which equals one. So that is one. Uh, so just rewriting that. When we divide by the group amount, we're really multiplying by the reciprocal. So we multiply both sides by the reciprocal. And um, that gives us, cancel out, gives us one. And we have x plus 27 equals um, this is 16 times 5, but you know what? Let's simplify ahead of time. We can divide this by 4, and that's 4, and we can divide this by 4, and that's 1. So really, we have 4 times 5, which is 20. Subtract 27, and we have, we're left with x equals negative 7. Oh, something Okay. So another way you can solve this problem is use the distributor property. Um, so be careful when using this one because I know people just tend to multiply the first digit together and not the second one. You multiply everything inside the group or parentheses. The way I like to think about it is if the, inside the parentheses represents a house. Here we have a house with three rooms, one room, one room, one room, a bathroom and a kitchen. Well, just looking at the room and the bathroom, if one house has a floor plan of three rooms and a bathroom, how many does two houses have? Two houses have six rooms, and two bathrooms. So we can write this as the parentheses uh, 3R plus 2B. And the number on the outside represents how many of these we have. So how many houses you have with this floor plan. Um, if we have 100 houses, that means inside we have 300 rooms, right? And then 200 bathrooms. And that's what it means. So here we multiply both uh, x and 0 0.06. So that is 100x plus 6 equals 21. Now we um, solve this normally, we subtract by 6, subtract by 6. That is 100x equals, oh my gosh, 15. Now we divide by 100. x equals, uh, what's that? 3 twentieths. or 0.15. So just notice, we could have also divided here, divided both sides by 21, but then we'd be dealing with decimals. It's not necessarily the easiest way to go about it. And this one, we could have distributed, but then um, we know that 
uh, five doesn't divide 27 evenly. So, I mean, just look at these problems that we'll solve and see how, which one would be the more efficient way to solve them. Now, moving on to 10.2. So three students each attempted to solve the equation two times the quantity x minus nine equals 10, but got different solutions. Here are their methods. So pause now and decide which one is correct. Also, the ones that are incorrect, uh, where did they go wrong? So take your time and let's work these out. Should have been paused. Looking at Noah's, um, 19 divided by two is his answer. It looks like it could be right, but when we plug it in, sorry, when we substitute it for x, we get 19 minus nine. No, remember, distributive property, multiply. It's really 19 minus 18, which is not equal 10. So where did he go wrong? Ah, right here. You add nine to each side. Um, well, technically you can do that. Yes, this is all correct. But order operations, we have to solve inside the parentheses first before we solve outside. So we cannot, so this is incorrect. Okay, looking at Elena's method, let's see what did she do wrong. Uh, we substitute negative four here, that's negative four minus nine, that is negative 13 times two is negative 26, does not equal 10. So it's definitely, so it's definitely the other person but where did she go wrong? So we applied the distributive property, multiply both of these, and then that's correct. Ah, subtract 18 from eight sides. So if we're adding here, yeah, we could subtract 18, but we are subtracting 18 minus 18, that's not zero, it is negative 32. So that's where this is wrong. So this is a negative 32. Um, yeah, and all the work, other work was right. And Andre's method, uh, apply the distributive property correctly. Uh, what was I, that's that. Added 18, right? Since we're subtracting 18, we need to add 18, or we can subtract negative 18. It's correct. There's correct, correct, correct. And if we were to plug this in, we would see that it is true. So for 10.3, now you're gonna be solving these equations and you're gonna to have to decide which one be, would be better to solve, either dividing both sides or applying the distributive property. Again, as long as you, you can do either one, but one is definitely easier than another. So stop right now and let's try these problems. And in case um, you, you're getting stuck, and stop doing right now, stop doing the method and write down why you stopped. It could have been like maybe, oh man, I am dividing by a weird a decimal by a fraction, and that just gets messy. So welcome back. Um, so for this one, we could apply the distributive property, but you know what? I think it's easier to divide. We divide both sides by 200, sorry, 2,000. Divide both sides by 2,000. These zeros just cancel out, and it's really six divided by two. So that is x minus 0 0.03 equals three. And then what do we do? We add 0 0.03, careful to line up the decimals, to 0 0.03 to both sides, x is equals to 3.03. .03. So let's try number two. Uh, so we could divide by two, but then we're dividing a decimal. And eh, I mean, it could work, but I think it's easier to just use the distributive property. So multiplying everything on the inside is 2x plus 2.5 equals 3.5. Uh, now we subtract 2.5 from both sides. Be careful when lining up the decimal. Minus 
five, that's zero, and we're left with one. Two x equals one, we divide by two, x equals one half. For three, I think it's easier if we just multiply both sides by the reciprocal or divide by one fourth. So multiply both sides by four over one, four over one, these cancel out. We are left with four plus x equals 16 thirds. Well, now we have to subtract by four, subtract four, and we're left with x. Oh, here's our side work. Uh, 16 thirds minus four over one. We'll multiply top and bottom by three. That's really 16 thirds minus 12 thirds. And that is uh, four thirds. So x equals four thirds. Okay, for the next one, um, hmm. so we could divide by 10, but what do we notice? If we, we have a decimal on the inside, so let's just multiply everything by negative 10. So that's a negative 10x minus negative 17 equals negative three. Oh, look, remember that meme? 10x plus 17 equals negative three. Subtract by 17 both sides. Um, rewriting this over here. This is negative 10x equals, what's three? Negative three minus 17, that's negative 20. Divide by negative 10 x equals uh, 2. So for this one, for number 5, you could use the distributive property, but what do you notice? Well, if you ignore the decimal, this is 54, and this could be 3. So we're saying we could we just divide and see that 54 divides by 3, and we get 18. All we did was... Um, move a place value over. So this is 5.4 divided by 0 0.3. So 5.4 divided by 0 0.3, right? Uh, if you multiply both by 10, make an equivalent fraction of 54 divided by 3. And that's still 18. So divide both sides by 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and that is 18 equals x plus eight. So now we subtract by eight, subtract by eight, and we see that x is equal to 10. So that about does it for today. Um, so just a couple things to consider. So what are the two ways you can solve uh, equations like the ones we saw today? And what kind of things do we look for to decide which approach is better? So in other words, which, why would you choose one over the other? Uh, again, uh, you can do both ways and they'll both work. It just sometimes one way is more efficient and makes your life a lot easier. So for an equation like that one, you can solve it two different ways. First by dividing each side by three or by rewriting that equation, like using this distributive property. And you sh for more than one way to solve an equation, you can choose the easiest way. All right, guys. So be sure to work on the lesson practice and turn in that exit ticket. Right. Have a good rest of your day.